Welcome back. So now we would like to talk a little bit more about how do we make decisions once we have a p-value. So recall from the last video that a p-value is the probability of observing the data you have if the null hypothesis is true. And we had thought about the example where you're sitting on a jury and you have someone who is on trial and it's possible that they are either innocent or they are guilty. And we start out assuming they are innocent and the lawyers will hope to prove that they are guilty. And so they will present us with a large amount of evidence. In the case of statistics, we would actually be presented with some means and standard deviations or some, some sort of numerical values. And from that, we want to get a calculation that tells us how strong this evidence we think is. And so from that, we compute what are called the p-values. Um, and we've given the example, maybe you compute a p-value of 0 0.013, or maybe you compute one of 0.25. And we said a 0 0.013, that's a 1.3% chance you would have make this observation if the person were in fact innocent, which means it's very unlikely that you would actually have all this evidence if the person was if innocent, which then should lead us to conclude that most likely they are not innocent, therefore they must be guilty. On the other hand, if we got a p-value of 0.25, this is not very strong evidence because it is a 25% chance that you would have all of this evidence if the person were in fact guilty, sorry, if the person were innocent. So let me say that again. If the person were innocent, you would have a 25% chance of gathering all of this evidence. And that would be somewhat weak evidence. Weak evidence against this person being guilty. So the question we have is how do we know what is strong evidence and what is weak evidence? Where is the cutoff? Where is the target? Well, for that we have what is called a significance level. Before you start an experiment, you need to know what level of strength do I think is strong enough I should go ahead and change my opinion from innocent to guilty or should I not change it at all? What is that cutoff? And that number is what we call a significance level. And often that is labeled with an alpha. And it is important before you start your experiment that you know what the target is you're trying to hit. Just like if you're going to shoot targets, you should have a target set up before you start. Otherwise, you could take a bunch of shots, then move the target close to those shots and change your answers to make, get whatever answer you want. So before you start, you should pick a significance level. Now, often we pick a significance level of, say, 0.05 or sometimes 0 0.10. Sometimes people even go as low as 0 0.01. But we pick one, often let's say 0 0.05. Now what does that tell us? Well, what that says is if I have evidence that is stronger than 0 0.05, so something smaller, we go ahead and in this case, we say it is strong evidence and we reject the null hypothesis. In the other case, if the number, say, is something a little bit bigger, like, say, point, let's go with 1, 3, well, that is bigger than 0 0.05, so that would be weak evidence, And we would go ahead and say, well, we don't have strong enough evidence to call them guilty, so we better just go ahead and assume they are innocent. And so we have weak evidence, and we would go ahead and we would keep the null hypothesis. So here's a short little way to remember this. If your p-value is less than your significance level, you have strong evidence and you reject H0. On the other hand, if your p-value is greater than alpha, you keep 
the null hypothesis because you have weak evidence. And that's it on significance levels.